We're back working inside of contact for this video and we're going to be doing some multi sample instrument setup so that you can see the method for that. This is a purely theoretical example and hopefully when you are working with multi sample instruments and creating them yourself, you might have some more inspiring samples that you're working with, but we can still do some pretty cool stuff using just a basic saw wave and a sine wave. All right, so let's go ahead and let's grab contact here. And we're going to start by bringing in our sawtooth wave. And really the methodology for working with multiple samples versus a single sample is really very similar. You just have to do some of the same stuff for each sample that you bring in, do the necessary preparation. And I'm gonna go into the mapping editor here. This sample is pitched to a C, which is what I want. And once I find the right octave, we'll be able to hear that. You can tell that it's cutting off. So we need to jump into the wave editor and we need to set up a loop for this guy. And we got incredibly lucky. It won't always work that well for you, but in this instance it has. So I'll go and I'll bring in my other sample, which is just the sine wave. Bring that into C2. Root is aligned to C2. We might have to change one of these in a little while and I'll explain to you why, but I can play it back, I can hear it. Uh, you need to have headphones or some system that can play lower uh, pitches in order to hear that, but even so, the methodology doesn't change. Snap to zero crossings and line this guy up. And there we go, it took me a little while, but I finally found one. Okay, so no clicks. The click that you're hearing just has to do with the um, amplitude envelope that has already been preset. But we now have our two samples in here, and right off the bat, you can see there's a lot we could do with this. So, for example, and this is something you commonly see, we could imagine that like we were playing something like a piano in our left hand. So we have piano samples all to the left, and we have like violin samples to the right, or some kind of synthesizer. Uh, samples to the right and then we could play them with our two different hands and that's commonly done in live performance spaces whatever you can maximize the space have two different instruments going or as many instruments as you want each one could take up an octave or something like that but what i want to do is i actually want to overlap these because that's something we can do in contact that you can't always do in other samplers and we could do it by just dragging and pulling over. That can get a little bit confusing though because you don't want to go in here and adjust the sample that's literally changing the sample. So you'll see that this is gonna change from sine bounce into the saw bounce, and that's not what I want. So the best way to overlap samples is actually to go into the list view where we now have more of a left to right display. And now I could go in here and I could just drag these out either manually or I can just use the range, which is a little bit easier to do. So I'm just gonna pull these guys all the way out like so. Okay, and be careful not to adjust the root like I just did. So I've changed the root back. All right, so now when we listen, on C2, let's make sure that nothing else was changed. The thing I'm not liking is how low this sounds. I'd pretty much be constrained to making like a bass sound or something. And what I really want the sign to be is more of just a layer, like a sub layer underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the saw and I'm gonna adjust the root down to C2 so that it should now be higher relative to the sine. And you can hear that like so. What if I wanna take this further? What if I wanna create more of a super saw? Very easy, I can just right click and I can duplicate the zones, okay? And I only wanna duplicate the saw zone. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do it a couple more times. All right, perfect. So now we have a bunch of different saw layers. And in some cases, it was actually a little bit too much because I had multiple selected at the same time. So I'll go down and just delete a few of these to speed the video up a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of these guys and I'm going to detune them and I'm going to pan them around. That's all a super saw is. Right now, we just have one really loud saw wave and a sine wave. But once I go in here and start detuning these... Maybe I'll put this one up by an octave. And if 
I want to get fancy, I can take these guys and like pan them out a little bit. And just like that, we have a pretty nice thick super saw that we could work with. Very simple sort of thing to set up inside of contact once you know what you're doing. So all I have to do now is close these down. I can go in here and I can insert an effect. Now, one thing that's important to note is that the way I did this was I set this all up inside of one group, okay? If I was to set it up inside of different groups, doing effects processing and being able to modulate effects, add-on modulars can be a little bit more difficult. This is the way that you can keep everything inside of one group and keep it nice and organized. We could have done something where the sign is in its own group, the saw is in its own group, but then it causes problems with your modulators. Okay, so doing it this way, very easy to keep things manageable and easy to work with. Because if I go down here and I start adjusting the envelope, it's going to adjust the envelope on all of the samples, not just on, say, the saws or not just on the sign. And unfortunately, I clicked it uh, <laughs> when I brought the release way up. So that's why it was taking so long to sustain away. But I can now go in and I can add in some kind of a low pass or some sort of like, let's say, I don't know. Um, do we have some kind of a band pass? Yeah, let's use a band pass here. And if you were to put this onto the insert effects, you would not be allowed to add a modulator to them. Okay, so this is one instance where it's very important to put your effects here inside of the group and why keeping everything in one group is so valuable. But you could actually argue in this case that wouldn't it make more sense to have two separate groups so that the sign isn't being impacted, so that the sub is staying on its own? And actually it would, so that might have made more sense for this. But um, in this instance, I'm just going to keep things as it is so that we can speed this up. We'll add some kind of an LFO. And then if we want to go down and adjust the speed on that, we've already seen, seen this before. And then one thing we could do if we want to go crazy is we could actually modulate the speed of this by going into like envelopes and adding some kind of an envelope to it. So let's try something like this. All right, so something like that you could set up very quickly, very easily inside of Contact. It's a very powerful instrument. It's a lot of fun to work with, especially when you're going to be using multiple samples and you want to be layering sounds on top of one another. Thanks a lot.